world of firearms is much like the world of male bodybuilding. Iron is pumped, stretched to its limit, and filled with all sorts of volatile chemicals designed to generate explosive power and an impressive aesthetic presence. Following the trends of the overbuilt steroid-injected weightlifters of recent decades, the human obsession with disproportionately large firearms has only increased as the demand for more stopping power and a bigger hole has become the popular and widely accepted trend for judging a weapon's legitimacy. This trend has literally driven certain weapon engineers stark raving mad and has raised the issue among seasoned firearm experts, size matters, but how big is too big? Somewhere along the line, weapons engineers realized that if a shotgun and a pistol got married, they would produce a baby that looked like it was on steroids, and voila! The Freedom Arms FA Model 83 454 Kasul Caliber Revolver was born. The Freedom Arms Model 83 claimed the mantra of the world's most powerful handgun by producing a 454 Kasul Caliber Revolver, which was capable of delivering over a ton of energy. A 300 grain bullet fired from the FA Model 83 Revolver generated 50% more foot pounds of energy than the same bullet fired from Dirty Harry's 44 Magnum. To stay competitive, other leading firearm manufacturers including Smith & Wesson, Ruger, Taurus, and BFR Magnum Research introduced revolvers designed for the 454 Kasul caliber cartridge. But unlike Dirty Harry's 44 Magnum revolver, the FA Model 83 revolver is not equipped with any type of automatic safety feature to protect owners and bystanders from the revolver firing if it is dropped or the hammer impacted without the hammer being cocked and the trigger being pulled. Smith & Wesson, Ruger, Taurus, BFR, Magnum Research all equip the revolvers with safety features called hammer blocks or transfer bars which prevent the hammer from impacting the firing pin unless the hammer is cocked and the trigger pulled. Thousands of people are hurt or killed every year in gun accidents. However, just because a firearm goes off doesn't mean someone pulled the trigger. Poorly designed rifles can fire a round when bumped and other defective handguns can discharge even with the safety on. Now the Insider Exclusive investigative series is not an anti-gun advocate out to put American gun manufacturers out of business. We are investigative journalists who are not afraid to investigate and hold gun manufacturers, big or small, responsible for designing and building unsafe products. Would you be surprised to learn that unlike almost every other consumer product. Firearms and ammunition manufactured in the United States is not subject to any federal health and consumer safety oversight. Fact is, no federal agency has the necessary authority to ensure that poorly made guns don't explode or unintentionally discharge when they are dropped or bumped. Today the Insider Exclusive presents Killer Guns, the Freedom Arms FA Model 83 454 Kasul caliber revolver and how Grady Chandler at the law firm of H. Grady Chandler is getting justice for victims of unsafe guns sold in America today. Like Harry who suffered mutilating injuries to his left leg and hip from a drop fire accident involving the Freedom Arms FA Model 83 revolver. In this in-depth special the Insider Exclusive examines what is known about defective firearms the gun industry's response to the problem and suggest a more comprehensive solution to reducing deaths and injuries from such products. We also address the gun industry's current push to inoculate itself from civil liability. The gun lobby maintains that unintentional shootings generally occur as a result of carelessness on the part of the gun owner. But while consumer education certainly plays an important role in injury prevention, no amount of user instruction can eliminate the risk associated with product defects in design or manufacture. This TV exclusive examines some of the firearm models that have been dubbed the most common offenders because of the high number of complaints associated with them, especially the Freedom Arms Model 83 454 Kasul caliber revolver. 
but all of these manufacturers are aware of the safety issues associated with these guns. Exactly how many victims are killed or injured each year by defective firearms is unknown because there exists no coordinated data collection on unintentional firearm injuries and deaths that include vital information. Our special report notes that comprehensive data is essential to identify firearms that are exceptionally likely to be involved in unintentional firearms related injury or death and to inform the public of the risk associated with such guns. To successfully reduce death and injury from defective firearms, the gun industry must be regulated for health and safety. At the very least, manufacturers should be required to recall, repair, and refund consumers for products deemed defective. Absent health and safety regulation, defective firearms will continue to be a deadly threat to public safety. Product liability litigation is currently the only mechanism available to hold gun manufacturers accountable when a defect in a gun's design or manufacture results in death or injury. Confidentiality agreements common in product liability suits have kept critical information about the safety record of gun manufacturers from the public and are a prime example of how the gun industry actively conceals information about injuries and fatalities connected with its products. And that is why Grady Chandler is calling for an elimination of such agreements. Additionally, all incidents of unintentional firearm injuries should be evaluated to determine whether the manufacturer contributed to the injury. Grady has earned the highest respect from citizens and lawyers alike as one of the best trial lawyers in Texas and in the nation. He has seen many innocent and hardworking people become victims of defective gun accidents. He knows firsthand that the gun lobby will continue over and over again to try to limit civil liability for injuries and deaths caused by industry negligence. And if they are successful, it will further erode consumer recourse and advance the gun industry's campaign to retain its unique exemption from responsibility. Ultimately, this dangerous dynamic can and must change. How many more firearm injuries and deaths will it take to spur this change remains to be seen. Hi, I'm Steve Murphy, and this is the Insider Exclusive, live from Garland, Texas, at the law offices of H. Grady Chandler. It is my great pleasure to introduce Grady Chandler to the show. Welcome to the show, Grady. Thank you. We're here today because we're talking about a product, which is a firearm. And uh, I want you to tell our audience a little bit about some of the uh, facts that are involved with this firearm, which is the 454 Casul revolver, correct? Right. Uh, the firearm involved in Harry Carlson's case is a 454 Casul caliber single action revolver. Mm -hmm. uh, the revolver has been manufactured by Freedom Arms since the mid-1980s. Uh, when the firearm was first introduced in the mid-1980s, it was marketed as the world's most powerful handgun. You have one of these here with you today, don't you? Uh, I, I have a 357 caliber version of that handgun. Okay. The handgun involved in Harry Carlson's accident uh, is actually in the custody of the court. So tell us about this weapon. Okay, this weapon is the Freedom Arms Model 97 single action revolver. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks exactly the same as the Model 83 that was involved in Harry Carlson's case, except it doesn't shoot as powerful a cartridge and as large a bullet. Right. Uh, it's also different because it has what's called a slide bar safety feature in the hammer. So this one does have a safety feature. Right. Freedom Arms makes single action revolvers that include uh, a critical safety feature mm -hmm. known as a slide bar safety feature as well as uh, a firearm that does not have right. a slide bar safety feature. And this goes to the heart of the case because they had this when you don't have the safety feature, you have accidents when the gun is dropped, right? Exactly. With the model unlike Unlike this firearm, with the Model 83, the hammer is resting against the firing pin, and the firing pin is resting against the cartridge inside the cylinder. 
So if the hammer is impacted in any way, it will discharge the firearm, which is exactly what happened in Harry Carlson's case. So with the Model 97, the Freedom Arms Model 97, the hammer is in a safe position. Uh, in the Model 83, it is not in a safe position because it can be impacted, as we've talked about, uh, climbing up or down a ladder in a holster. Mm -hmm. uh, it can even slip if it's moved back just a fraction of an inch, a sixteenth of an inch, and can discharge. Uh, all of these things not only can happen, but they have happened. Yeah. Every event I've just described to you has actually happened to an owner of the Model 83. Now, if all the other gun manufacturers uh, produce a gun, manufacture a gun that has safety features to prevent what you're just talking about, why doesn't Freedom Arms do the same thing? It's inexcusable. Uh, it's such a basic rule mm -hmm. of gun safety that a gun should only fire if the trigger is pulled. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Freedom Arms claims that it does not have this safety feature because the owner should know better. For right. example, the owner should know in its manual it instructs the owner to carry the chamber mm -hmm. empty that's in front of the firing pin. Mm -hmm. So in effect, they're saying that their five-shot revolver is really a four-shot revolver. Right. But their position consistently in these cases is that we have a warning in the manual that states that you should carry the chamber below the firing pin empty. Yeah. And that's their idea of a safety. In other words, they say because it's in the manual, that covers their rear end per se, right? Correct, okay. correct. But, but fundamental principles of safety engineering yeah. uh, provide that a warning is never a substitute for a safer alternative design. You also brought with you Dirty Harry's 44 Magnum to show our audience the the hugeness of these guns, and it's almost ridiculous having a weapon like this, but go ahead. This is the Dirty Harry revolver, and until Freedom Arms introduced its Model 83 with the 454 caliber Kasul, this was considered the world's most powerful handgun. Mm -hmm. Ruger equips all of its revolvers with the transfer bar safety feature right. that we talked about earlier. Yeah. Again, with this Ruger, the hammer is not resting against the firing pin. It's actually resting against a space between the, against a space between the firing pin and the end of the hammer. And until you actually pull the trigger, that space will remain. As soon as that trigger is pulled, a bar slides between the firing pin and the hammer and allows the weapon to fire. Right. Okay. And in 1972, Ruger felt strongly enough about implementing this safety feature that they not only put it on all of their revolvers, but any revolvers that they sold prior to 1972. They recalled them. They, they recalled them and offered yeah. to retrofit them with this safety feature free of charge. Yeah, that, that's responsible manufacturing. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Because unless the retailers are also held accountable for selling products that they know to be defectively designed, uh, there's no incentive for Freedom Arms to quit producing these products. Right. And Freedom Arms, as you have mentioned, has filed bankruptcy, haven't yes. they? Uh, so after the lawsuit was filed, and really on the eve of a trial setting in November of 2010, Freedom Arms filed bankruptcy. And that has the effect of staying or stopping the litigation yeah. until you get permission from the court and bankruptcy court. They're still selling the unprotected weapon, aren't they? The unsafe Freedom, weapon. Freedom Arms is selling knowingly selling yeah. uh, a weapon that it knows will kill people. Now, today we happen to have with us one of the persons that you represent in this case who had the misfortune of being injured, uh, Harry Carlson, and we're gonna bring him on right now. It's my great pleasure to introduce Harry Carlson to the show. Welcome to the show, Harry. Thank you. You're a victim here, aren't you? Well, yeah, I think so. You could say that. Tell us what happened October 22nd, 2007, when you were around this weapon. Well, um, we were, uh, I was with uh, three good friends. We've hunted for several years together. 
And um, as, there, there were three of us in one vehicle, and um, one, my other friend was in uh, a vehicle by himself. After we parked, um, they, my other two buddies um, were at the back of the truck um, unloading their gear. It's an SUV, so they would raised the lid uh, and were unloading their ge gear while I was waiting on them. Uh, I had started to move over to uh, the other vehicle to, to talk to um, to talk to my other buddy, and we were uh, going to talk. We were discussing how we were going to engage on the hunt that day, mm -hmm. and um, uh, without really any kind of notice, I just I felt a concussion, and uh, you know heard the you know the 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 boom, I knew, you know, it, it's pretty obvious at that point that a, a gun had discharged. Uh, I knew I was hit, but I didn't know exactly, um, you know, to what degree. And this was the, the weapon that we're talking about today, the Freedom Arms weapon. Yes, I didn't, I honestly didn't know it at the time, yeah. but it was the, the Freedom Arms 454 Casul. Was that your weapon? No, it was not. It was it, one it, of the... It actually belonged to a friend who, who I was hunting with. Uh -huh. um, he was the only one in the group that was actually hunting with a pistol. Everyone else had rifles. Yeah. Now you're an experienced hunter. You're an outdoorsman. Um, you are, have been around guns a long time. This weapon didn't have any safety features to prevent what happened to you. Uh, it, it did not. Again, I, I was not, I had never used that gun before. I, I was not familiar with it. Uh, to, you know, very much at all. What were the extent of your injuries? The extent of the injuries were um, the, the, the bullet had gone through the lower, really the lower part of my hip uh, and exited in the groin, uh, but in the process it had, uh, it had just uh, completely um, wiped out about four to five inches of the femur bone in yeah. the left leg. Being an experienced hunter, familiar with a lot of weapons and guns and the safety features, et cetera, uh, and now knowing firsthand the danger of this Freedom Arms weapon, you have become kind of an advocate in making sure that other people don't get hurt. What is your viewpoint of manufacturers or how should they manufacture a product that's safe? Well, I, I think the, that's a hard one to, to, to answer in some respects, but my belief is that uh, I, I think a lot of consumers, myself included, yeah. we make a lot of assumptions about, um, you know, about a, a, the way a gun is manufactured and the, the safety features that are on them. Um, there's a, a lot of uh, discussion about, well, you know, is it, was it well documented whether, what kind of features it had. It, it might have been. But just like driving a car, you make uh, some assumptions about, the, the, you know, the, the steering and the braking and the general operation of that vehicle uh, without going and reading the owner's, owner's mm -hmm. manual or looking at the engineering specs. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of um, a lot of uh, hunters, a lot of consumers, uh, you know, feel the same way about manufacture about firearms. And I think it is incumbent on the manufacturer to ensure that that you know a state of the art uh, accepted method of uh, providing you know safety features on a gun should be you know should be exploited. And that would be your message today on national TV to the gun manufacturer, Freedom Arms, to be responsible for that, right? Yeah, no, no question about it. Uh, I wouldn't be here right now if I didn't feel that way. Well, I wanna thank you very much for being on the program. Thanks for taking your time to be here. We certainly hope that all of these safety features are implemented to prevent injuries like you experienced. Grady, as a result of this lawsuit and the ones you're pursuing against Freedom Arms and any other gun manufacturer who produces unsafe products, um, there is also another entity out there that o owes responsibility to the public too, and it's the retailers, isn't it? That's correct. And talk a little bit about what retailers' responsibilities should be. Well, 
Well, first of all, until Freedom Arms begins equipping all of its revolvers with automatic safety features to protect against these types of accidents, the community is going to be needlessly endangered. Mm -hmm. And until they retrofit all of the firearms that are out there, because these firearms are designed to travel through generations. Yeah. Uh, how, many, how many of these firearms are out there, roughly? Well, there are about 35,000. 35,000 unsafe 35, revolvers out there. Right. But that's a low number when you consider that Ruger makes millions of revolvers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's why what I said earlier is statistically shocking that we would have 15 people seriously injured or killed with just 30, 35,000 revolvers out there. Yeah. But this case is also about holding retailers accountable because if the retailer in this case is held accountable, other retailers will refuse to sell right. Freedom Arms firearms. Every American wants to make sure that Manufacturers produce products that are safe for everybody, and I want to thank you for being on the program. Thanks for joining us. You can get more information about our guests and the issues at insiderexclusive.com.